maybe let's not exaggerate. Okay, it pulls, it pulls. <laughs> Hi and welcome to a new episode of Apex Race with a BMW M8 competition. The really pinnacle of BMWs line up with the M8, like the highest one. And then we have the competition, which sets a number one on the top. So we will check out the exterior, the interior, and we will go for a quick test drive. If you would like to see a PO V video of me driving this car from zero to top speed, check out the info box. So I would say have fun and enjoy. So actually in the front, I would say it looks a little bit boring because everything is like blacked out. Only we have like the three bars, the M logo here, but even the M8, the grill, everything is like black out and if you maybe see it like in the rear mirror you could think oh it's like um i don't know uh series five or so yeah so not really huge thingies but if you look closer when you have the chance then you see behind these grills everywhere like radiators massive radiators to cool down the whole big like v8 B turbo engine and also we have like this very very classic I won't say classic nowadays but in general like the edges on the hood of course it's super light everything I don't know if you, even if it's carbon or aluminium for sure but super light everywhere like edges going from the back to the front like cutting through the air and i mean we are talking about a top speed about 300 something so you need also a very good cw numbers yeah you need that i don't know the exactly one for the m8 competition but it has to be good also yeah we know that here also like the roof you see it's uh, actually the roof is carbon fiber you see that and then we have like also here some um, two edges that is uh, for sure for aerodynamics. The side of the M8, I really, really like. Classic GT design, long hood, short deck lift, and even like the deck lift here is a little bit longer, but I think like the whole composition of the car, I really fall in love with that. I would like to see more Sada, such kind of cars. I mean, beginning of that, here in the front, we have just 19 inch big rims with 265 wide tires i mean it's not huge it's not massive like um there are cars with like wider tires even through like the let's say narrow tires we have like time from zero to 100 in three point something seconds and uh, that happens through the all-wheel drive and it's like adjustable you can only go with um two-wheel drive in the in the rear in the rear so rear wheel drive or you can add the four-wheel drive and because of that, of course, we have like this very, very good results in like the acceleration. But if you go on fuel economy, so it's also like possible to drive a car a little bit more with less fuel consumption. Then we have in the fender, this inlets here. Unfortunately, there are like fake inlets or cooling outlets, whatever, blackout only three bars of the M logo and then we have like the side mirrors and here very funny only the lower part is actually holding the side mirror and the upper part is like not connected to the window it's empty like I don't know why BMW did it maybe just design purposes but actually it looks funny a little bit yeah of course uh, indicators then like in the door edge with the lower spoilers I would say actually a very very of course it's a little bit shaped the door but a very flat door without any edges like in the front on the hood we have just like this uh, very light roundish um, form and then we have down here this edge and uh, in the back part everything is super smooth not too edgy only like this very very thin line here and on, on in the in the trunk area it's getting more and more than edgier and really i like like this longer it it could be also like a hatch you have to open but it's just like the trunk lid and then you see that the lines are starting here like this line and it goes up to the roof there's like this line which is going like to the soft line on the uh, on the hip yeah and then 
uh, we have also like this line which is uh, actually going nowhere but uh, where things are a little bit more edgier we have like also this little spoiler here but uh, overall I, I really really like the sideline. In the back things are a little bit more aggressive from design perspective also. We have like this really really cool LED lights. Then we see the BMW logo and then the M8 is black but the competition is in silver and the three bars of the M. And also we have more in the and the bumper and the rear bumper we have way more edges like here and there and here so more dynamic more aggressiveness but also the four enormous exhaust tips which uh, produces a amazing sound a really amazing sound we will hear that later <laughs> So the trunk of the BMW M8 competition is gigantic and I mean it's even too huge because if you would like to reach something go there and even like that I'm stretching here I cannot touch the back part of the rear seats so you have so much space for two persons it's a little bit too much and besides that we have don't we we don't have so much here we have like just a net here and actually yeah we can flip the rear seats with like the uh, lever here we have like the two buttons close the trunk and close the whole car of course emergency first aid kit but besides that there is not much in the trunk and of course we are talking about the m8 competition probably we don't need so much in the trunk welcome into the interior into the cabin of the bmw m8 competition so the competition is like the fully loaded m8 i think there is not much more you can add to like the base loadout of the m8 competition unfortunately we are here missing the m drivers package which is like um unlocking the top speed of the car so we are limited to 250 if we would have like the driver's package we would go like without any limit so like from the interior design i really really like this brownish leather very classy comfortable good looking leather not too sporty not too classic just right like the color combination with the overall like design of the seats of like you know the sides here for the side hold the steering wheel everything looks very very nice and like i mean this is like actually i don't know if that is plastic or aluminium but it feels actually really good we have of course memory seats we have power windows power mirrors we can adjust that and we have some electric opening for the trunk so it's also going automatically that's no problem of course automatic headlights fog lights parking lights real lights everything with just uh, buttons here i really like that with buttons and then we have like on the steering wheel really really nice let's say three spoke steering wheel actually it's like four spoke down low of course heated with distance control with multimedia with everything and then we have like this two red buttons here to be honest i thought in the beginning it's like somehow manual mode one or two no it's like the mode overall you can uh program yourself like reconf uh, like configure yourself in the beginning like uh how sporty how comfortable the engine the suspension everything should be so you can pre-select with just one button click here okay i'm going now full attack racetrack mode one or i'm going like super comfy for a long journey then mode two and everything adjusts to that so really nice idea with just two buttons here i can click on that and everything is like done no like to twist or so or looking for the right mode here in the console so um everything on that side is uh, i think it's a it's a good solution to have it done like that way and then of course a little bit like old school we have our board computer 
lever here, which is like, I don't know when, when BMW, BMW invented that, like I, something like 25 years ago or even longer. So they have like this BC, stands for ball computer. Here, of course, you have the headlights. Uh, like the long beam lights, you can adjust them. And on the right, you have the wipers, of course, with some sensors and they are going automatically. And in the steering wheel, behind the uh, red buttons, you have like shift up, shift down. So this is cool. And in the front, you have, of course, like a display unit and no gauges, mechanical gauges anymore, just like this um, display unit. So in general, you have like two displays. The one for the driver and then one for the multimedia. So I would say nowadays very standard. In the middle here we have our climate control with of course heated and um, cooled seats, uh, all kind of defrosters and here maybe a highlight which I personally like are the buttons in the middle which is turning on the uh, AC or like the menu or going up and down and there's like actually two buttons in one. You click on the lower one or you're on the uh, upper one and then the button activates which is like indicating okay temperature down, temperature up. So uh, maybe a little bit <laughs> too complicated explained but I think you know what I mean. And then we have like in between this um, the um, ventilations we have also like a small digital display showing the um, temperature or is AC on or not or the ventilation out or not. So I, I actually like this quicker solution with the buttons for the whole climate control, not like that you have a separate display or in the main display to configure your ventilations or air conditions and stuff like that. So button, I'm more of a button guy. Then down below we have our multimedia, let's call it multimedia right now. We have like the pre-selected radio stations, volume on, volume off, next, whatever. So um, you know that BMW standard, I would say. Down below we have there like the M8 competition. The M8 is here like in black, so you can nearly see it, but down below we have like the competition written logo on that. And then we have some piano black uh, cover, which is covering the two cup holders. Uh, some um, USB port, some indication um, charging for your phone. So I really like if you don't want to, you can just hover it, cover it with that nice um, yeah, cover. Then we have our stick shift with the uh, M logo on it with some um, the M the, the M colors, blue, red and like uh, light blue, I would put it. It's in aluminium, really nice to, to feel it. Um, I Maybe the design could be a little bit different but it, it does its job and it's really cool. So and then we have the parking mode inside and then we have some free bars and I think, I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong and probably all of you know better than me. So we have like up and down and then this free bars and what I like so far saw is that it's like the agility of the shifting or in which gear you are driving. When you have like one bar, it's super low. It's like the most possible lowest gear. And then when you go up, the, the gear selection is going like down. So you have more revs and you are more agile. But uh, what that actually has a name or whatever, I can't say, please tell me. Then we have like the red start engine stop button and it remembers me a little bit of Honda S2000 which had it like here somewhere but like this red is like the same I would say. Uh, park assistance on the left, cameras, uh, distant, uh, traction control, stuff like that, uh, auto on and off for the engine, even uh, BMW M8 competition has that. And then down below we have like the M modes, the setup, the exhaust, stuff like that. You can configure that with like just a um, yeah, quick button here. Of course, then the e-brakes. And then on the right, like on the passenger side, we have our quick buttons. Maybe a little bit hard to read for the driver, like media, comms, home, 
map and stuff like that. It's a little bit covered, like especially navigation. I can I cannot really see it behind this knob. So uh, you know, twisting, going left like a joystick. It's uh, a little bit complicated in my side, like the whole um, multimedia system. I would not go into detail into that because otherwise it will be like one hour long only just explaining this multimedia system. But in short, I would say it's a little bit over complicated. You have like um, access for different points to, to select that and it's not so intuitive as I would like imagine. Of course options backs and then we have also this is also aluminium and then we have like some yeah some storage compartment only like one USB port down here so a little bit yeah so in general we have one here and then one here so actually we have one A and one C so I I would say nowadays just like two ports um, maybe they could add like a second one or so that would be nice then of course uh, hand glove uh, glove box uh, yeah not so much here not so much space everything nice like the lever is really really in general the materials the dashboard is like cushioned so that feels really nice also the lever here and here but actually the armrest here and overall it could be in my opinion a little bit more cushioned it's uh, a little bit hard what is really nice is like the Alcantara roof that feels really really nice but hey um, it feels nice but when is like the possibility you're touching the roof so it's not so often we have also like like ambient light, I mean, we have like this light purple. I really like it. It's not like overloaded like in our cars, but it's really, really light. Like, you know, classic, only like that here, then some lights here. And uh, unfortunately, back in the in the lower seat, like in the back seats, we don't have really nothing. And I will also not go into the back seats because for me, it's like more for children. You have no really um, leg room there. And I mean, yeah, actually it's a, you know, overall it's a really nice design, uh, but the back seats are quite useless. You can use it as a quick reach storage department because actually the trunk is super, uh, long super deep but other than that I don't know I don't know it's I, they are quite useless for passenger transportation of course sun visors with LED lights and mirrors for driver and passenger and then here's some cult, cup holder and then this um, thingy like we have lights and uh, yeah actually nothing more but a really nice design I really really like the cabin design could be a little more or more of like uh, like nowadays multimedia convenience style, but overall general, I really like the map. I noticed it's a little bit out fashioned nowadays compared, especially like with the new Mercedes maps. That is a little bit out fashioned. What is really good, like the assistance center systems, you have like on the head up display, whole maps warnings for stops stoplights or if you have to yield and stuff like that that is really really good i would say um let's check out uh, the engine of a bmw m8 competition so under the hood of a bmw m8 competition so the competition version produces a little bit more horsepower I would say uh, 100 or something like that. So it's quite a lot with like the same performance. I don't know if BMW did that like electronically or not. So we have like this V8, I think it's 4.4 liters, something like that with two turbochargers. Normally the BMW M8s have like 530 horsepower and now we have like 625. So adding, I guess they added just more boost to it so we have more power here and actually yeah we don't really see so much but um, that thing goes fast
So welcome into the BMW M8 competition. So what's your first impression? I really like it. <laughs> no, I definitely uh, love it. Yeah. You love it. So yeah. you loved the Lamborghini Urus and now you are loving the BMW M8 competition. What do you love more? M8 or Urus? Yeah, you can't compare those two super much. I don't know, like, I think from the visual point of view, I like this one more. Okay. I think it's more elegant and definitely Lamborghini Urus makes more, it's more impressive, right? More people look at you when you drive and it's more like creating this wow effect. Yeah, I don't know, like, which one I would buy, <laughs> but I like this one because it's very comfortable beautiful and it's also it goes fast and you can't really feel it so much yeah. yeah that's actually very very true you can't really feel it it's going super fast uh, you can see that in the POV video that we gonna like from 0 to 200 in like 10 seconds and you don't really feel it because it's for me it's a very classic GT Gran Turismo it's for long journeys driving fast fast long journeys but very comfortable from the outer perspective it's like super nice I'm really into the shape of like this long bonnet short deck but we have a ton of of luggage space here it's more a two plus two not really enough seats in the in the back uh, from driving as you said you really don't feel it that it's driving so fast even if we have like here the different modes like sport um, comfort and, and track or whatever the sound is getting louder but but the sound is super cool so actually i really like the sound it makes it's like it's super strong and like whoa right really heavy yeah. but then it, the, at the same time it's kind of when you drive it's quiet right yeah so exactly just, yeah. yeah so we are now like in m1 i configured that for comfortable driving and we are driving now uh, 80 something like that and you don't really hear it right no, it's super quiet okay yeah. and now i'm switching to m2 this is my sport mode you instant hear the exhaust is getting louder right you hear mm -hmm. it and then yeah yeah you hear it yeah but mm -hmm. it's it's really i have to downshift yeah. and it pulls it pulls it pulls <laughs> yeah maybe let's not exaggerate okay here. maybe we should uh, yeah, <laughs> we should respect the tempo limits of the door German Bundesstraße uh, but it's cool right it's cool you have like two cars in one actually yeah. a very comfortable long journey car and then you have like the sporty sportiness brakes amazing yeah Blake, a little bit too soft for my taste uh, eight-speed automatic shifts like an eight-speed automatic very quick very fast not really yeah feeling that engine wise you feel that it's like a B turbo you you feel like that the kick comes later a little bit so we are here in the M8 competition what does competition means we have a little bit more power I think something about 100 horsepower we have like the carbon roof uh, I think the the bonnet, the bonnet is also maybe carbon, I don't know. And then of course we have like here M8 competition in the rocker panels, M8 competition, stuff like that. But um, we have to pay, uh, I don't know, like 50, 60,000 more just for a little bit more power and and some carbon What's parts it? so how many seconds does it need to go to 100 this competition version i think like uh, the factory says 3.3 seconds i think it's exactly like Orus, no i don't know i don't know but in the end i, I was, I was like doing the testing and once i had like three something and then i had four 
And then it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And the version without glutathione? Because you are not going so fast. Yeah, but the version without competition? I don't know. Maybe half a second later, uh, slower. Okay. So it really, yeah. we, are, we are talking in such spheres that it doesn't matter how. Is it like 3.3 .3 yeah. or 3.6 or even 4? I feel very comfortable in this car. And it also, super, I said, this looks super nice and yeah, I feel secure, you know, even when you drive fast, it's quite stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. shaking. We will put some outtakes in and then you you will see how, how safe it is. Yeah, but uh, not, not go when you drive 280. Yeah, but. yeah it, unfortunately, it doesn't go 300. It just go 250 because we don't have the M drivers package here, which is like unlimited speed. But uh, as we saw uh, a couple of minutes ago, don't go too fast. Yeah. So you would never go so fast because you are scared, actually. So you d you don't need such a car. I mean, I'm scared, but with the dogs. <laughs> Wait, with the dogs, it's like the dogs would be there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, I would also buy an M8, mm -hmm. even if if I am personally I I don't like like the automatics. It's a little bit boring for me, and I know that the turbo lasts I don't know 180,000 kilometers, and then you have to exchange them or regener regenerate them. Well, would also buy. She yeah. she likes. And now comes <laughs> the question: Would you buy an M8 competition? Yeah, if I had this, yeah, I think I, I mean, you buy the sport, the sports car also to be able to drive super fast. And although it's not very reasonable, maybe to pay that much for this carbon parts, but on the other hand, it's cool, right? We are talking like 200,000 euro M8 competition, 212 fully loaded. 195 base price or so which is also very very much loaded you know when you're buying m8 you have m way more things you can add up okay i probably would not buy the m8 competition and here is the reason why because you don't need it so for me personally because when you are going on a racetrack you would not go on a racetrack with an m8 it's just too heavy it's too heavy we are talking about two tons two tons of like even with carbon parts it's just too heavy so if you're going on a racetrack you go probably with a m4 or m2 so the m8 is really like for gt long traveling a little bit quicker yeah and if i'm going now to this 200 in 10 point five seconds or 11 seconds i don't care mm -hmm. and the additional 100 horsepower i also don't need that but would you go for a m8 or m8 competition let us know in the comments so thanks for watching in this episode of bavarian muscle car power and uh, check out the pov video and I hope we see us in the next episode of Apex Race. I'm curious what we will drive next. What do you think? Any suggestions? Lamborghini Huracan. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay, maybe. <laughs> maybe that will come also true. Uh, depends on the weather. So, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.